But before day broke, an Egyptian of high rank landed, and as he stepped ashore from the cutter, he began to ask urgently where Charius was. So he was taken to Polycharmus, but he said he could not deliver his secret message to anyone else, and his mission was very urgent. For a long time, Polycharmus tried to put off his meeting with Charius because he thought it was no time to intrude on him. But since the man kept on insisting urgently, he half opened the bedroom door and told Charius of the emergency. Like a good general, Charius said, Tell him to come in. War brooks no delay. It was still dark when the Egyptian was shown in. He stood by the bed. I have to tell you, he said, that the Persian king has killed the Egyptian king. He has sent part of his army to Egypt to establish order there, and is bringing all the rest here. In fact, he is almost here now. He has heard that Aratus has been taken and is very anxious about all the wealth he has left here, but particularly distressed about his wife, Tatira. As this news, at this news, Charius leapt up, but Calerho caught hold of him. Where are you rushing off to? she said, before thinking about the situation. If you broadcast this news, you will cause a great insurrection. Once everybody knows, they will pay no heed to you. We shall be captured again and shall be worse off than ever. Charius was soon convinced by what she said and had a plan in mind when he left the bedroom. He took the Egyptian by the hand and called all his force together. Men, he said. We have beaten the king's forces on land as well. This man has brought us the good news and letters from the Egyptian king. We are to sail as soon as we can where he tells us. So all of you get ready and board ship. At these words, the trumpeter sounded the call for re-embarkation. They had loaded the spoils and prisoners the previous day, and there was only heavy objects and useless things left on the island. Then they began casting off and weighing anchor. The harbor was full of shouting and confusion, with everybody busy at something. Charius went from ship to ship, giving the captain of each a secret signal to set course for Cyprus. They must seize it, he said, while it was still without a garrison. The next day they had a favorable wind and put in at Paphos, where there is a temple of Aphrodite. When they anchored before anyone disembarked, Charius sent heralds to proclaim peace and make a treaty with the inhabitants. They accepted the proposal, and he landed his whole force and paid honor to Aphrodite with offerings. Then, collecting a large number of animals for sacrifice, he held a feast for his army. While he was considering his next move, the priests, who are also prophets, reported that the sacrifice augured well. Cheered by this news, he called together the ships and captains and his 300 Greeks and all the Egyptians who he saw to be well disposed to him, and spoke as follows. Fellow soldiers and friends, you have shared great successes. To me, peace is fairest, and war least dangerous when you are with me. Experience has shown that harmony among us has made us masters of the sea, and the critical moment is now on us when we must consider the future course for our own security. I have to tell you that the Egyptian king has been killed in battle. The king of Persia is in possession of all the land, and we are caught in the midst of our enemies. So now, does anyone suggest that we go off to the king and throw ourselves unreservedly into his hands? They immediately shouted that that was the last thing they should do. Then where shall we go? Everything is hostile to us. We cannot even rely on the sea anymore. Now that the land is in the hands of our enemies, we cannot fly away. These words were greeted with silence. A Lacedaemonian, a relative of Brasidas, who had had to leave Sparta as the result of a crisis, took it on himself to speak first. Why are we looking for somewhere to go to get away from the king, he said. We have the sea, we have ships, between them, they can take us to Sicily and Syracuse. And there, we need not be afraid of the Persians or even the Athenians. Everyone applauded these sentiments. Charius alone pretended not to agree. The reason he gave was that it was a very long way to sail, but he really wanted to test their firmness of purpose. 
but they insisted and were all for sailing at once. Well, my Greeks, he said, it is good advice you are giving. I am grateful to you for your goodwill and your loyalty. I shall see to it that you do not regret it if the gods take you into their care. But the Egyptians, there are many of them whom we cannot compel against their will. They have wives and children, most of them, whom they do not want to be torn from. So circulate among their number and start asking around, each one of them, as quickly as you can, to make sure we only take along those who want to come.